Um, as Herschel said, I'm Randy Schmidt. I'm the faculty director of clinical programs. <laughs> and um, we talked about it a little earlier that we had not done a lot of uh, back padding, but I think we should do that now. Um, we have a number of people in the audience who should be thanked for their contributions to the clinic over uh, not all of its 50 years, but a substantial part of them. Uh, one of them is Mark Heyerman, who was the faculty director of the clinical program uh, before me. And not only that, but he's been in the clinic even longer than I have uh, been. Uh, we also have Randolph Stone, who was the director before Mark. And Randolph also helped guide the clinic into what it is today. Uh, and then last, and, and certainly not least, is Gary Palm, who was the director from 1970 to 2000 and really formed the clinic into what it is today. Gary, thank you. Um, I'd like to thank all of our panelists. I think we've had some very interesting and uh, exciting discussions uh, through these panels. I'd like to thank the alums who've shown up the current students who've shown up, the faculty that's shown up. Uh, thank you all for coming. Um, what I, I was supposed to do concluding remarks, but they're really more observations. And I've divided them into three parts, right? Everything's divided into three parts. Uh, first, simul similarities. Second, differences and then challenges. Similarities. In the early 1950s, Ed Levy became dean of the law school. And shortly after he became dean, he gave a series of talks on legal education. And in those talks, he talked about the, the way law schools educated law students and lawyers and how that method was being criticized. Um, and he noted that that criticism was, was, to some extent, inconsistent. It was being criticized for being too vocational and it was being criticized for being too uh, theoretical. Uh, that it wasn't training lawyers how to practice law. Uh, he noted that the primary method for teaching law students was the case method. Now, he didn't call it the signature pedago uh, pedagogy because that word hadn't been uh, invented yet, right, or that phrase. Uh, but that's what he was talking about, that it was being criticized because we just used one method over and over to teach students, and it wasn't achieving the, the goals. Um, and, and at least out of these criticisms, he saw a number of problems, but the two that, that kind of resonate, resonate today are that the law schools were not adequately teaching students how to do writing and draftsmanships, draftsmanship, uh, how to draft contracts and things, uh, complaints, and that it was also failing to prepare students how to try cases. Um, he looked at a number of possible solutions. He looked at the apprenticeship type program where students would be assigned to practicing attorneys for maybe a fourth year of law school. Uh, or they would have a tutor in the law school that would supervise their work on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Uh, he looked at the medical school model and although he saw differences between the medical school model and legal education, he thought there were some similarities that we could um, um, build on. Out of these discussions, uh, he came up uh, with the proposal uh, of a, a legal clinic. Um, and the way he put it, I have to put my glasses on because to talk about changes, I can't read this stuff anymore uh, without them. Um, so he said, suppose a clinic were attached to a university law school, which handled actual cases under the supervision of a trained staff and under the general guidance of faculty of law school. It would be possible then to take a number of students and have them assist in the preparation of cases. If the cases were chosen because they had some research interest, these students would be coming into touch with the law in, a raw, in the raw in those areas where a university has been able to formulate questions and hopes through answers uh, to be able to advance legal knowledge. Uh, from that idea, a few years later in 1957, the Mandel Clinic was created at the University of Chicago Law School. Uh, but the issues we discussed today were still kind of the issues that he was discussing then. How do we better train and educate um, 
lawyers. So the sim similarities um, 50 years ago and today are still there. Uh, the differences. Um, there are a number of differences. You, you heard Steve describe the way the clinic was back in 1960. You look at our new building, you see we are no longer in the basement. Uh, we're no longer under the stairs. Um, those of you who are students in the clinic know that when you give us work, you receive nothing but praise and no critique. We're very supportive, right? Okay. Um, differences. Um, but the number of clinics, you even heard that today. Just a few years ago, we had four clinics, right? Four different areas. They were all litigation-based. We've now expanded that. Not only do we have litigation, we have a very active legislative ag advocacy program. We do transactional work. We do small business startups. We're expanding in a variety of ways. We now have nine clinical programs uh, compared to the four just 11 years ago. Uh, so we have the differences both in the space and in, in the program. And then the other difference, uh, there, there are a number of others, but, but the, one of the other differences is this conference. 25 years ago, when we celebrated the 25th anniversary of the clinic, this is what we did, right? It's a cup, and although you can't read it, it talks about our 25th anniversary, and on it are cases, cases that we had won in the clinic over those 25 years. Um, because we, we valued our success at that time because we were winning cases, we were changing the law, we were reforming the law. Today we haven't talked about cases, we've talked about educating students. And so our difference is that our focus, although we still want to win, we still want to represent clients and win, but we are much more focused now than 25 years ago on educating students and being part of the educational endeavor that um, the University of Chicago Law School is all about. So those are some of the differences. Now the challenges. And, and Mark brought this up in his question. The, the real question is not kind of where we are now, but where will we be in 50 years? Uh, and that's a long way to think, a long way off, a long way to think about. Uh, but there are a number of things that have come up today that I think we are going to struggle with over the next 50 years. Uh, first, one size does not fit all. So whatever answers we come up about the future of clinical legal education and its role in the law school or in law schools across the country, we're going to have to recognize that one size does not fit all. We are going to have to have a balance. We're going to have to have education and clinical education tailored to the needs of the, the law schools. Um, we're going to have this challenge of how do we integrate the ideas um, that are, are expressed in the best practices and the Carnegie Report. How do we integrate those into law schools? And do we integrate them the same way in each law school or in each clinical program? Or do we have to tailor them to meet the, the needs of those, those law schools? How do we deal with student demand? Um, when we had four clinics here, we had a waiting list you know, uh, of 30 or 40 students. We now have nine clinics here. We have waiting lists of 30 to 40 students for each of those projects. So even though we've increased the number of spots in the clinic, I think we have well over 100 students in the clinic now. We have this unmet demand. How do we meet that? Do we meet it through universal clinical opportunities? Do we meet it through mandatory clinic? Do we expand clinics? Do we limit the uh, time that students can be in the clinics? These are all issues that we're going to have to, to address, not only here, but in other clinical programs. Um, and then the, the last one, uh, and, and this is the one that Steph Krieger brought up, you know, how do we value or uh, evaluate if what we're doing is actually working? Uh, for 25 years, for 50 years, we've talked about winning cases. We've had students talk about what a wonderful experience it is. Uh, we've talked about, they've talked about how it helped them in practice. Uh, but do we really know that? How do we do the empirical research to see if, in fact, what we are doing in clinics is reaching our students, educating our students, making them better lawyers? And we need to know that. We need to know that because we need to change if it's not. Uh, and although some people thought Steph's presentation was a little negative, I actually thought it was positive. I thought there were some things we could do better, but overall I thought it was positive. Uh, but we need to know what we're doing and what works and what doesn't work so that we can achieve the goal of educating uh, law students and making them ready for the practice of law. 
All right, so that's, that's the, what I, my, kind of my concluding observations. I see a lot of similarities between the discussion that was going on when the clinic was founded 50 years ago uh, and now. I see some differences. And then I see a number of challenges that we're going to have to address over the next 50 years. All right, uh, thank you for coming. Uh, that is it, I think, unless um, Hershella has um, any other concluding remarks. Uh, she's stepped out of the room. All right, well, thank you very much. <laughs>